Hey, kia ora. Helen Brown's coming to you live from Wilderness Lakes in Menifee, California. So tonight I have a double barrel question for you from two different people. Two questions, two people. So Jen wants to know what is a travel bucket list and Matt wants to know how do I get stuff off my travel bucket list? And my response to this is, here we go. You ready? It's going to be good. So a tra so for Jen's question first, what is a travel bucket list? A travel bucket list, some people call it a, um, a travel to-do list. Um, other people might have other names for it. But basically what it is, it is something where you put down all of the places in the world that you would like to go. Not just countries you want to visit or towns you want to visit or cities you want to visit. What experiences do you want to have? Like, for example, one of this will shock my mother. And my father probably too. But on my bucket list is, and it was a recent addition in the last four or five years, was to do a bungee jump. And there is only one place in the world that I will ever do a bungee jump. And that is off the Kaurau River um, Historic Bridge in Queenstown, where it all started with AJ Hackett back in 1988. So that is the only place in the world that I will do a bungee. So that is on my bucket list to do. And it's the only place in the world I will do it. So it's looking at what experiences do you want to have um, and where can you do those experiences? Where can you have those? For example, um, walking along the, the Great Wall of China, because there's only one place you can do that. Um, it could be doing a river cruise. Well, then it's deciding where, which river do you want to go on? Do you want to go on the Danube? Do you want to go on the Rhine? Do you want to go on the Seine? Do you want to go on the Douro? Do you want to go on the Mekong? Do you want to go on the Chobe? Um, lots, do you want to go in the Mississippi? Lots and lots and lots and lots of choices on rivers. So when you say river cruise, you need to narrow it down. It could be you want to do all the different river cruises. It could be that, yes, you want to do a river cruise, but you want to do it um, on a barge. You know, might want to do like a canal, canals on the, bar the barge, the barge thingies along the canals. Um, <laughs> sorry, brain freeze. Um, so it could be um, something like going hot air ballooning. Where do you want to go hot air ballooning? That could be an experience. Where do you want to do it? Um, Beth has just put in there, I want to go to Dubai. So do I. One thing on my list is to spend at least one, preferably two nights on the Burj Al Arab in Dubai. That is my. That has been on my list since the very first time I ever saw it on TV where they did this tour through the place. I thought, that is an amazing place. I want to go see it. I want to spend at least one, preferably two nights, at the Baj Al Arab. So there's only one place I'll be able to do that in the world. Um, you know, going to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Do you want to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas or the top of the Eiffel Tower in Paris? So you got to think of these things. Um, you want to see waterfalls. What type of waterfalls do you want to see? There are so many places around the world with waterfalls waterfalls um beth absolutely let's do it together absolutely let's go start at the bar jalarab that'll be an amazing experience i mean cranky it's like they, that um title themselves the only seven star hotel in the world we only go to five <laughs> so but the but the photographs of this place the video i saw about the building of it and what it looks like i mean one of the suites has a road has a King's size bed and you get a 360 degree view from this king size bed as it very slowly rotates and there's floor to ceiling windows all around in the suite um so that would be an amazing experience but I don't think budget would allow to stay in that suite I'll probably just end up one of the budget rooms down like on the first or second floor <laughs> but you know so what experiences you want you want to go um you want to go sailing in a yacht where do you want to go sailing in a yacht um, you want to do a pirate's cruise. Where do you want to do your pirate's cruise? There are so many options out there on things that people want to see and do. You know, you want to go see, um, you're into tennis. You want to go watch um, a tennis match. Which tennis match do you want to see? Do you want to see the US Open, Wimbledon, the French Open, the Australian Open? So many options there. Um, you want to watch um, PGA golf tournament. Where do you want to go to see the PGA golf tournament? Do you want to follow it around the world and go to the, see them at the different golf courses? Or is there certain ones that you want to go see? Like... Um, um, St. Andrews or go watch the Masters in Augusta, Georgia, you know, lots and lots and lots and lots of options. So Travel List is making a list of the experiences that you want to have in life that may involve traveling. Um, and then it's also looking at what countries do you want to visit? Um, what cruises do you want to take? What tours do you want to take? Um, for example, one of the ones on my list is a genealogy tour through um, England, Scotland, and Ireland, because that's where my ancestors are from. So I want to start in, Corm in um, Cornwall.
Cornish Cornwall. I want to start in Cornwall and visit the area where some of my ancestors came from. Maybe even because of the age, I'll be able to see some of the houses, the outside of some of the houses that they used to live in, and then go into the actual public records and see um, the vital statistics like the birth, death and marriage certificates there in print in the, in the registers. Then travel up through England, going through some of the places where my um, ancestors are from, going up into Scotland, up to just north of Inverness where the Ross clan is from, um, going over to Ireland because one of my, let's see, my second, second? Second great grandmother was born in the police barracks in, in the police barracks maternity ward on in Dublin, Ireland, and we're not sure where her parents came from. So we sort of, but apparently we have some distant cousins in Ireland. So I want to go to Cork, which is where all of the genealogy records are held, and check it all out and do some research. So you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a genealogy tour? Go follow you in the foots of your in, in the foots of your ancestors. Um, there is just so much. Do you want to do a World War Two history tour through Europe? Um, there is just so much. I mean, they just celebrated the, well, not celebrated, they just commemorated the 75th anniversary of um, of D-Day at Normandy. Um, you know, going and seeing the beaches where all of those allies came up. I mean, it's just incredible when you see the number of personnel that were involved and think about the logistics of even planning that and the fact that they managed to keep it secret. It just blows my mind when you hear all the stuff that went into into creating that and creating that event. It's just mind blowing that it never leaked. It's just it's mind blowing. But going and experiencing places. I remember when we were in Nuremberg. We're up there at the Nuremberg Palace and we're oh castle and we're overlooking the city of Nuremberg. And our guide had their photographs that were taken after Nuremberg had been bombed during World War Two, And he goes, see that yellow house down there? And we're all like, yep. And he points out this, this narrow yellow house. And then he pulls out this photograph and goes, that's that yellow house standing here in this photograph. Everything around it was rubble. And there was just this one house that was standing and it was this yellow house. It was just standing straight up. Everything else around it was rubble. And to think, wow, how did that one house survive and everything else around it was leveled? Um, it was just... It just astounds me. Um, going to places where um, it's still done like, um, oh, what's the place in Germany? Ravensburg. Ravensburg? Where it's a UNESCO heritage site because it's still set up as at medieval times. I mean, how cool is that? Going and seeing something from, you know, you've been to the medieval games and all that sort of stuff. Um, oh, my gosh. Going to this weekend in... Um, in San Diego, we've got the Scottish Highland Games and the Gathering of the Clans. And uh, I was talking with a friend of mine today. She had no idea what the Highland Games were. And I said, oh, my gosh, this is where they go tossing the caber. They toss the hammer. They have all of these events. They've got the Highland dancing going on. They've got the pipe and drum band competitions. They've got the dog trials. They have um, Scottish bands in there playing live music. They have traditional Scottish food for sale there. Um so how cool would it be to go to Scotland and see that? And speaking of Scotland, August of every year, they have them Edinburgh Military Tattoo. I used to watch that on TV as a kid growing up. I've always, always wanted to go and see that. So that is on my list to do. There are so many experiences out there that you can add to your list. So Jen, I hope that answers your question about what is a travel bucket list. And I just hope that answers your question. It's just putting on there the life experiences you want to have and the places you want to go and see. Now, Matt... How do you cross things off your list? Talk with your travel professional. Um, talk with your travel professional. Let them know what is on your list because here's the cool part is that if they have a list of the things that you want to see and do, when they see deals and specials and stuff coming through or some great packages coming through that could be something that you're interested in, then they know to contact you and they can contact you on specific things. For example, I have a friend who wants to go through the Panama Canal. Got a great deal going through the Panama Canal right now. So I sent, so I posted that information on Facebook knowing he would see it. And he could be going on the Panama Canal on Festival of October this year. Um, you know, it just depends on their timetable and stuff as well. So let give your travel professional your travel bucket list on things you want to see and do. And... Um, and they can then be in contact with you about any deals that come through, any specials that come through. Hey, there's a great package that that would knock this, 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 and this off your list. Um, so things like that. And um, so what's Jason got here? Been there, have you? Is that about the Edinburgh military tattoo? I have not been to Scotland yet, so I haven't seen it yet. Um, closest I've gotten is going to the Scottish Games here in, in San Diego. But that's nothing like the, the military tattoo. That's 
I mean, the military tattoo, they bring in all these military bands and marches um, and drill teams and all of that from all over the world and put on this massive display. It is just phenomenal. Um, I just remember watching it on TV as a kid and going, I've got to go see that live one day. Um, so, yeah, so give your list to your travel professional. Talk to them about it so that they know what it is you're looking for. Um, and then they can keep their eyes peeled for the different deals and stuff that come through and get you going and helping you cross off um, the um, the stuff off your travel bucket list. Um, also, too, when you're looking at costing stuff off your travel bucket list, let them know what your budget is for time, how much time you're going to have to travel and that sort of stuff. Like if you only get a certain time, um, a certain time every year that you can take your vacation, then let them know that so that they know not to look for deals. So if you can only travel in May of every year, then they're not looking for deals in September. Um, that they know that May is your, your travel time frame. So let them know that sort of thing. If you're somebody who has one of those really cool jobs where as long as you have an internet connection, you can work from anywhere, like me in my RV, um, then you can um, just turn around and say, hey, I can go anytime. And that way they can definitely get the best deal for you. Okay, so Jason says here, nope, the San Diego Games is, oh, is what I was referring to. Yes, I have been to those, let's see, five years in a row. No, f out of the last five years, I've missed one. But I'm going this weekend. <laughs> and we actually, we, um, it's actually really cool because if you're not sure how one of the, the sports works, They've got areas where the where you can sit and watch the things that are put, that are being done, like the cable tossing and that sort of thing. And you ask the athletes questions, and they will explain to you how it works, how the how the scoring works, and all that. Like the cable toss, if you don't know what cable is, it's like these big, tall wooden phone poles um, that are all different lengths. And they basically have to pick these things up by the bottom of them. So they've got them on their shoulder with the pole going straight up behind them. They have to balance it. And then they have to run X number of steps and then toss it. So with both hands on the bottom, lift it up. And it has to flip end over end and land as straight as possible between two markers. So they have the markers that go out in a, y, uh, in a V shape. And um, it's seeing how far you can throw it, but at the same time, how straight can you toss it as well. And it has to go end over end. So it has to do a complete 360 in order to count. So um, it is so cool. And you can ask them questions. Like they had this one where, and I can't remember what it's, um, tossing, tossing, what are they tossing? It's this um, the sack and they've got a pitchfork and they stand with their back. It's kind of like a high jump bar thing with the bar across it but the bar's up high and they've got the pitchfork with this thing wrapped up in sacking and um and they have to get the pitchfork jab it into this thing and toss it up and over the horizontal bar um i can't remember what that's called then they have the hammer toss which is this metal this lead ball on the end of a long of a um long metal pole thing with a handle on the end and they grip that and they spin around and spin around and then they let it go um in the right direction of course um uh, kind of think of like that one's kind of like which is the ones that like discus if you think of discus where they've got the disc in their hand and they spin around and then let it go this is hanging this is the similar movement but the hanging onto the handle on a long piece of of bar with a ball on the end and um they swing that around and they kind of do it in an arc where they dip it down and then bring it up and then kind of throw it. It's it's hard to describe. You just got to watch it. It's amazing to watch. And then you got the Highland dancers, and these girls are so light on their feet. It is unbelievable. Um, and they do the the dance around the they put the swords down with them crossed over and they do the dances between the different quadrants. Um, and then the pipe and drummer bands are always amazing i love bagpipes i love bagpipes my favorite time at the games is the marching of the clans where they line up all the clans in alphabetical order and then they pipe them through the through the main street and the main street is through where all the booth tents are set up because it's done on this in this park and they have this um they have tent booths all down these two sides they have this main strip there, and then they have a main stage area and they um march the clans down there and around onto the main onto the main field and then they halt and then what they do is that they call each clan in alphabetical order and somebody is up there 
um, saying the name of the clan, what cl- what other names are associated with that main clan, and some of the famous people that have come from that clan. So it's actually quite cool to go through that. And um, of course, I've got to wait a long time because Ross is, of course, down in the R. So I have to go th- everything from A through whatever, Q, <laughs> A through Q. <laughs> there are no Q ones, but A through whatever to, I think it's P's. Is there P's? I can't remember, but I gotta go. I gotta wait a while before the Ross clan gets to come out. So, um, so Matt, I hope that helps answer your question. So, Jim, we've got your question on um, what are travel bucket lists? Those are experiences and places you want to visit around the world, or it could even be close to home as well. Um, and then, Matt, how do you cross your stuff off your travel bucket list? Go talk to your pro- travel professional, make sure they have a copy of it, let them know your travel time, what your budget is going to be per vacation. Um, and they will take it from there and keep you in mind when different deals and stuff come out so that they can um, make sure that you get the biggest bang for your buck and get maybe cross off two or three things instead of one thing um, on your travel bucket list as you travel. So if you are interested in helping get stuff off your travel bucket list, send me a private message and let's have a chat, set up a time and have a chat about that. And if you have any travel questions, private message them to me as well and your question could end up being our question on the day. Thank you everybody for tuning in and watching and thank you for your questions online at the same time and we will see you guys tomorrow night. Have a super fantastic sparkling evening.